Hello there. Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and this video we're breaking down the Obi-Wan trailer. First fact, Obi-Wan is short for Obi-Wan Kenobi, R2 is short for R2-D2, and Luke Skywalker is short for a Stormtrooper. For more crap facts like that, make sure you stay locked into the video as we're going to be breaking down all the easter eggs, hidden details, and things you missed in the new look. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button, and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer. Okay, so Obi-Wan Kenobi has a lot going on with it, and personally, I think it's going to be the biggest Star Wars Disney Plus show. We've had The Mandalorian, which was a completely unknown character, and this was then followed by The Book of Boba Fett. Though he's got a strong following, and I love the guy, he wasn't one of the major, major characters, whereas Obi-Wan was a pretty big part of the prequel and original trilogy. This is the first massive character we've had a show for, and to build upon this, Hayden Christensen will be returning as Darth Vader. Though it somewhat contradicts the line about when they last met in A New Hope, I'm sure they can work around it, and the Kenobi show is going to fill in a lot of the blanks between Revenge of the Sith and that film. Now Obi-Wan will begin on Tatooine, a handful of years after he dropped Luke off at his aunt and uncle's. Amongst the dunes, he watched over young Skywalker, and this has been explored in some of the comics which may inspire some of the episodes. We've known for some time now due to concept art that at some point he'll ride an EOP, and if you cast your mind back to the end of Revenge of the Sith, you'll remember that he rode one then too. The fight is done. We lost. Now we cut to him very much having to live a lowly life, and whereas he was once revered by many, he's down on his luck. We can see a line of people queuing up, and later he's on a transport, which is very reminiscent of the Great Depression, when people used to have to line up for work and also food. He says the fight is done, and that they lost, and from here we cut to him overlooking Owen Lars' farm, where we can catch Aunt Beru and also a young Luke. With the goggles on, he very much looks like how Anakin did in the prequel trilogy when he went pod racing, and it's some awesome iconography. This actually also feels like it was ripped right from the comics in a moment in which Obi-Wan looked over Luke. Stay hidden. Now one of the major aspects in the comics that will likely get fleshed out in the series is that Obi-Wan basically puts survival above being a Jedi. What I mean by that is that the character would see injustices in Mos Eisley, but a lot of the time he wouldn't be able to intervene. In the comics from the journals of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke came across his diaries, and these expanded on his life on the planet after the fall of the Order. He had to very much lie low and hide who he was because, as we know, there are Inquisitors that are on the hunt for him. We also know that Joel Edgerton will be reprising the role of Owen Laws in the series, and if we look at the comics, we can kind of speculate what sort of role his character will play. In the books, Obi-Wan knew that he should really be training Luke, and though this could put him in danger, it would better prepare him for if his father ever managed to find him. Obi-Wan knew that the temptation of the Sith was very powerful, and that if he hadn't been trained in the ways of the Jedi first, that he would instantly give in to it. Now on the other side of this was Owen, who didn't want Luke getting involved in any of the drama. After Obi-Wan sent Luke a gift, Owen actually angrily returned it to him and told him to stay out of Luke's life. However, Owen did somewhat come to appreciate him after Obi-Wan saved the pair from Black Chrysanthemum. You'll likely remember him from the Book of Boba Fett, and I think they purposely introduced the character there so that it's way more impactful when he shows up in the series. Now, the story around this is that Jabba started running an extortionate water attacks on moisture farmers in the area. Obi-Wan put a stop to this, and Chrysanthemum was sent out by Jabba to find the man who'd cut off some of his income. Chrysanthemum took Owen hostage to draw Obi-Wan out, and the pair ended up fighting each other. Obi-Wan won, Obi-Wan, and Crescenton ended up fleeing the planet for some time, which I think would be an awesome storyline to drop into the series. The key to hunting Jedi is patience. Next we cut to the Lucasfilm logo, and you can catch some sand drifting in over the top of it, which is of course representative of Tatooine. From here we jump to the Grand Inquisitor, the leader of the Jedi hunting group that has appeared in several aspects of the expanded lore. He's not alone and if you look in the corner, you can also catch another member of the group who I believe shows up later on in the trailer. I'm not 100% on who this is, but I think it's Fifth Brother, who is one of the many Inquisitors that we get a look at. Later on we're introduced to Inquisitor Eva and initially when the sizzle reel first dropped, a 
a lot of people thought that this might be the second sister from Fallen Order. Jedi cannot help what they are. Their compassion leaves a trail. Now, Sith Inquisitors were basically Force sensitive people that were enlisted by Vader and Palpatine to hunt down the Jedi. Throughout the galaxy, they're constantly on the search and they'll do whatever they can to make sure that Order 66 is carried out to completion. She's clearly stalking Tatooine and there have been several images of her released through Entertainment Weekly that show her talking to Owen Laws. We know very little about her and it is possible that the seventh sister may appear too. She did show up in Rebels and there was very little known about her, so I think she'd make for a great character to pop up in this season too. There's a lot of theories that the seventh sister is Barriss Offee, who was potentially teased in the Grogu flashback of Order 66. I'm a bit unsure whether that's the case, but with it being a popular fan theory, I thought it was worth bringing up. Due to the architecture here, it seems like it's Tatooine and we see Reva on the planet, so hey, it makes sense. Now we also get shots of several of them together and on the back of one you can see the lightsabers they typically tend to use which has a circular handle. Now at this point we see some stormtroopers and you'll notice that they're now in the fully classic uniform as opposed to the clone one. In the Bad Batch we watch as the Empire ended up phasing out the Kaminoans and at the end of the series they destroyed Topoka City. The Empire realised that it's much much cheaper for them to just invade a planet and force the people there into conscription but with this comes a lack of skill which is why the stormtroopers couldn't even hit that like button if the world's worst YouTube channel told them to. From here we jump to the Inquisitors, happily publicly executing all those that could potentially harbour Jedi. Lars is clearly worried by this as he of course knows Luke is the son of Darth Vader and I can't wait to see the showdowns that they have. Now it's from this point that we catch the Inquisitors and Obi-Wan on the planet Dayu. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, writer Joby Harold said it's got this sort of Hong Kong feel to it. The planet is graffiti laden, full of neon signs and it's very captivating to look at. There's a chase across the sky and Obi-Wan even uses a blaster at one point which he of course said in revenge was a primitive weapon. He releases some birds to cause a distraction and then we get the words hope survives which is of course playing on a new hope. Now the trailer ends with Vader's breathing and though he's not in the first look, he will be in the show. It's going to be interesting to see how they play this as we know from the established canon that he wasn't aware of Luke Leia at this point in his life. It was only after the destruction of the Death Star that he learned Luke was his son and this of course pissed the guy off massively as Palps had told him Padme died because he killed her in anger. However, she actually died of a, of a broken heart after she gave birth to the twins. Now this was something that Palpatine didn't tell him as he suspected that his children could lead him away from being his minion and also because he was probably embarrassed by how bad the writing of dying of a broken heart was. Now both the Sith and Jedi realise that if people have attachments to others, that it can end up clouding their judgement and much like how Ahsoka didn't want Mando to see Grogu, Palps didn't want Vader to learn about his kids. This is also why he didn't return to Tatooine to look for them as he simply didn't know that they existed. Also yet, yeah, side tangent, I love that Obi-Wan had anywhere in the galaxy to hide Luke and he left him with his uncle. I know, I know there's actual reasons behind it but I, I always just find it kind of funny and yeah, let me laugh yeah, I haven't slept for more than an hour at a time since my kids were born. Now Vader not knowing about them is something I don't think they will retcon because this lie was a major factor in why Vader wanted to overthrow the Emperor with Luke. His palace on Mustafar will also be appearing in the series, which we saw in Rogue One. Vader built it on the planet because he was somewhat born there. I think we'll stop by it at several points in the season. Hopefully we get lots of scenes where he's in the Bacta tank because, as we know, everyone loves that. Now this series is all going to build towards a massive showdown between Vader and Obi-Wan which was first teased at in the concept dart. This is basically what everyone wants to see and I'm so hyped to watch this play out. We kind of already know that Vader has to lose it and then that still keeps things in line with a bit about him still being a learner in A New Hope. Now a big character I've not really seen mentioned in any of the leaks, reports or info on the show is Emperor Palpatine. If Darth Vader is showing up then it makes sense that Palps would too. I don't really like the Rise of Skywalker that much but you know what Star Wars is like, they tend to do something terrible and then spend the next 10 years explaining it so that you actually grow to love it. I didn't really like the prequel trilogy all that much when it first came out but thanks to Clone Wars I enjoy it way more and I think that they could do something like this with the Palpatine clone story. We did get a tease towards this in The Mandalorian Season 2 and if they expanded on it in this one, I think it would at least help with some of the criticisms that I have with the last Star Wars movie. It would offer a ray of new hope at the finish, which is a very po pun, eh? Having that? 
Now as for my thoughts on the trailer, it's got me really hyped for what's to come and it seems like this is the series where they're bringing out all the big guns. As I mentioned earlier, all the prior series were centered around characters that were either brand new or ones that only really got expanded on in the Clone Wars and Rebels series. Here though, we have a major character from the prequels and original trilogy and there's also of course Darth Vader coming back. Hayden returning is a massive get for the series and I can't wait to see how the new show fleshes out not only Obi-Wan's life but also Vader's. Gonna make for a really interesting series in my opinion and I'm hyped for its release when it drops in May. Now until then I'd love to hear your thoughts so make sure you comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the thumbs up button and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. On screen right now we have a breakdown of the Batman which I think is one of the best videos that we've ever done on the channel. A lot better than this crap and hopefully I'll see you over there after this but if not then thanks for sitting through the video. I've been Paul, you've been the best and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, peace.